Hi, I'm Barb Rosenstock, the author of a bunch of nonfiction and historical fiction picture books for children. And you're here in my writing office, which used to be a bedroom. And um, the only other thing you need to know is that there is also my dog, Nikki, is on the floor. So you probably won't see her, but I hope and I hope that you don't hear her. But if you hear a dog, that's what's going on. Um, I live north of Chicago, Illinois, and my latest book is Leave it to Abigail, The Revolutionary Life of Abigail Adams. It's illustrated by Elizabeth Badley, and it's about Abigail Adams. And Abigail was born before our country started. Um, people talk about the founding fathers all the time, but Abigail was one of our founding mothers. And she's one of the most important ones too. She was the first American woman to talk about women's rights. And she did that in a really famous letter to her husband, John Adams, um, where she said the words, remember the ladies. She was trying to get John to put some idea of women's rights in our country's initial documents that were making the laws for the beginning of the United States. Um, Abigail also surprised people in millions of ways. Uh, her whole life, in a time when girls were supposed to stay quiet and in the background, she was confident and competent. She was a great parent, a great um, politician, a great writer, a great businesswoman. And whenever there were problems in her life, people relied on her and um, kind of leave it to Abigail became one of the things that um, was said a lot about her. She could do anything. She used her skills to support her family and her country and um, the other women in her life. Uh, one of the favorite parts of the book that I like best, and I'm hoping you're going to be able to see it here, is actually the last couple of pages. And I hope you can see that. Oop, let me see which way I'm going. Um, this is all um, some of the many other American women that Abigail inspired um, of all cultures, races, and times. Uh, their surprising lives are kind of also featured in the book. And I really like the idea that Abigail's independent spirit lives on in young readers today um, and in our women leaders right now. The seed that, that spurred the book um, was a third grade girl that I met a number of years ago. As an author, I go into a lot of elementary schools uh, to visit, to do author visit and talk with kids. And there's a lot of questions and answers. And about four, I wanna say about four years ago, there was a young uh, woman, a girl in about in third grade, and she raised her hand during question and answer session. And she said, how many books have you written? And I said, 10, about 10 at that point. And she said, how come only one of them it has a girl in it. Isn't history, don't, don't, aren't girls part of history too? And that question just stopped me. And I thought, wow, I have been educated in a real traditional history framework where only men did important things and women were in the background. And it, that was the first time that I really realized it in my own work. And I didn't want to um, keep doing that in my work. So I started actively looking for female characters. And um, one of the first people that occurred to me in history, in American history, was Abigail Adams. But I kind of rejected her right out of hand. And because I can remember that the only thing I learned about her when I was in like second or third grade was that she supposedly hung laundry in the in the White House, the new White House. And I remember thinking, oh, she's she just did women's work. She's not going to be important. And again, I was stopped by that. I'm like, what does that mean, women's work? You know, at the time I was raising a young family, I was doing the laundry <laughs> and I'm a writer. I was also writing books. So that's women's work. And I had a friends who were doctors and that's women's work and friends who are teachers, women's work, friends who worked in offices and factories, women's work. So it started to really dawn on me that women's work 
has been sort of devalued, like it's considered not important for generations and generations. And um, I looked into Abigail further and visited her houses with some historians. That was very helpful in Massachusetts. Um, her homes are part of national parks, um, her homes with John Adams. And I visited the park and learned way more about Abigail's life and how much she accomplished at a time when women really weren't allowed to do much of anything. And Abigail just didn't play by the rules. So that's that fourth grade girl I can, or third grade girl, I can thank her for the inspiration for the book. Ingenuity often means invention. You know, people use it as something about invention. And when I first saw it, I was like, invention. And then it occurred to me that ingenuity isn't just inventing things outside of ourselves. It's also taking the skills that we already possess and doing amazing things with them, or even doing something different that we would not have, we maybe weren't told to do. And I think in that way, Abigail Adams really is an example of ingenuity. She invented and reinvented herself throughout all the ages of her life as a young girl, as a young wife, as a mother, uh, as a politician, as a businesswoman. She just kept inventing and reinventing herself. And I think that that's a, just a terrific example of American ingenuity, doing what, the best you can with the skills that you possess. Yeah, history's heroes for today's children is just a way that I have of reminding myself that history is continually alive and that what I'm writing isn't uh, for readers all about the past. It's to bring those past experiences um, good, the good parts of them, and sometimes the challenging parts of them or the parts where uh, we kind of as a society got them all got it all wrong and bring that in to the future and to talk um, and to make sure that today's readers have an opportunity to see themselves in that past history. So it's just shorthand for me of talking about my own work, remembering what I'm, what I'm trying to do myself. I love the library in general. It's like my first memory is being taken to the library, but the Library of Congress specifically, um, I wrote an entire book about the Library of Congress called Thomas Jefferson Builds a Library and obviously did a lot of research in the Library of Congress's own collections um, to find out the information for the book and how Thomas Jefferson's books became uh, the core of the collection. I have actually used the library often. Um, this other book, Otis and Will Discover the Deep, was uh, inspired in part by a librarian named Connie Carter, who's at the Library of Congress. And she was sort of the godmother of the book. The book is dedicated to Connie. And um, we did lots of work uh, researching uh, early ocean science in those collections at the Library of Congress. And Fight of the Century um, was in, in part um, kind of inspired by the Library of Congress's suffragist photo collection, which um, is on a, a specific site right now. It's the 100th anniversary this year of the 19th Amendment. And um, I used those photos and realized how much actual conflict there was in the suffrage movement and came up with the idea of Alice Paul and Woodrow Wilson and, and the fight that gave women the right to vote, how she had a battle for it. So I use the Library of Congress kind of all the time. I'm a big fan, big fan. Kids especially, kids have hundreds of stories to tell and I want them to know that their stories are important. People need to hear what you think and you wish and you hope for and you dream about. So writing is the process of playing with words really to tell a story. So keep reading and keep writing and keep playing because that's the best part of being a writer. All right, leave it to Abigail, The Re Revolutionary Life of Abigail Adams by Barb Rosenstock, illustrated by Elizabeth Badley. And just so you all know, these, Elizabeth Badley's phenomenal art is actually sewn in this book. She took the women's work and the women's art of cross stitch and made the illustrations out of it.
In a clapboard house in the colony of Massachusetts, a baby girl's weak cries drowned in the cold November wind. Her worried parents hurried to bless and name her, but Abigail surprised everyone. She lived. Abigail grew up in a time when most colonial girls learned just enough words to read the Bible and just enough math to shop. Everyone knew that good girls kept quiet. But leave it to Abigail. She blurted out questions and eavesdropped on visitors. She ignored mother's chores and explored father's books. She bossed her sisters, brother, and anyone else who would listen. Only grandmother Quincy understood. Wild colts make the best horses. Little by little, Abigail tamed herself. She finished tasks before reading. She learned to milk, bake, stew, salt, cure, spin, knit, knit, and weave. Abigail banked fires, raised chicks, and brewed herb medicines. Everyone knew she should marry a prosperous minister. Leave it to Abigail. She met a struggling country lawyer named John Adams. She teased him with her bold opinions in letter after letter. She insisted on marrying the man she loved. Abigail stitched shirts, dipped candles, and rocked their babies while John ran their farm and practiced law from the house. She reviewed John's notes on cases and clients. Soon, he opened a second office 10 miles away in Boston. Abigail packed up the family and moved with John, farm to city, city to farm, and back again. Out her city window, Abigail saw Boston marching toward rebellion. England's King George forced American colonists to pay taxes on everyday items. First sugar, then tea, glass, paints, even paper. But colonists had no say in how their taxes were spent by England's government. People boycotted, leader, leaders, leaders organized. The King Black Boston Harbor sent soldiers and ships to keep the colonies quiet. Riots broke out, people died. John wrote articles supporting colonial rights. Abigail shaped John's words and shared her opinions. And I'm gonna stop there. So leave it to Abigail to fill a book full of surprising stories. The story continues here. Thank you so much for listening, learning all about Abigail and joining the National Book Festival. Thank you so much.